Isha, and welcome in everyone. I see a couple people from my neck of the woods. I'm coming from you in um, Northern Virginia, about 20 minutes south of, or southwest, east. I don't know, we always confuse it. Um, I'm outside of DC. So um, nice to see everyone and welcome in today's class. We are going to combine two really fun products. I have the Cricut Smart Stencil material, which I'm going to show you how to cut and use this to create a stencil and add etching cream to a glass jar. Um, this one is a, a nice one of these little Libby beer can jars and I put dad on there. So you got to go that way so you can get the whole thing. So I did dad on there. And so I'm going to show you a little bit of how to apply the armor, um, the armor etch cream to your design. Now the class is set up in three different sections. So the first section, I'll walk through some slides giving you information, and then we'll go into design space together. So I do invite you to open up design space and work on your design with me, and then we'll send it over to the cutter and cut it out. As Felicia mentioned, this class is being recorded. So um, you can always go back if you want to just watch and soak it all in. You can always go back in and craft later. Now, if you, um, the benefit of being in a live workshop, if you have any questions along the way, please feel free to drop them in the Q&A. I have Lindsay and Anita with Cricut um, on the back side today, ready to answer those questions. And some of them I can answer live too. So we're super excited to have everybody um, with us. My name is Kesley Anderson, and I will be your Cricut instructor for today. Let's get started. First, I'm gonna share my screen so that we can all go in and kind of get that overview of information about um, the Cricut materials we're gonna to use today. So today's project is a Father's Day and using glass etching cream to make the perfect gift for a father. Now the Cricut Smart Stencil Vinyl, this is a fantastic product. Um, you may have seen we older vinyl, this is all new and the Smart Stencil Vinyl is designed to work with your Cricut um, Maker 3 or Explore 3 without having to use a mat. So it's just load and go. It's a really quick process to using um, the vinyl. Uh, it also, when you're cutting this vinyl, it's a little bit thicker. So you really get clean lines on your design. So when you put your vinyl on your blank and you add your paint or your etching cream, whatever material, whatever, um, you're using the stencil with, you really get some clean lines with that. The vinyl is durable, but it removes clean. So by that, I mean, we will have um, the, the, it removes clean. So there's no residue on the blank when you remove the vinyl, which is fantastic. I have noticed um, that it seems like it's a little bit like it sticks a little bit stronger than the regular vinyl, which I think really helps uh, give you the clean lines when you add your paint to it. And if um, I see Rose's asked a question, she only has permanent vinyl, that is fine. You can work with that today too and use the glass etching material with that. The Smart Stencil Vinyl is a thicker, more durable vinyl, and you can reposition that and use it multiple times in one design. So that is, um, that's a great, that's a great perk. And if you don't have a Maker 3 or the Explore 3 to use the Smart Vinyl, that load and go material, you can also use the Smart Vinyl on your cutting mat as well as just stencil vinyl here, which will work in the previous models of machines. So either way you can use them. I actually did use, I had a little piece of the smart stencil and I use that um, on my cutting mat. So you can absolutely use any of the smart materials on a cutting mat for an older machine. But if you have the Maker 3 or the Explore 3, you can certainly use that on, um, on those as with the load and go feature helps it go faster. Now, one of the great features of the trans, of the uh, stencil vinyl, which is makes kind of why I prefer it when I'm working with a stencil project to regular um, 
to regular permanent vinyl is it is translucent. So you don't notice it when you look at your packaging. Um, it looks like a light blue type of material, but as you can see here in this image, it's actually a very, um, it's a very light blue color and you can see through it. Now the stencil vinyl also works with um, your sponges, sponge brushes, paint brushes. You can use spray paint with it. You can use a roller paint brush with it and really get those clean lines on your design. The smart stencil vinyl, again, doesn't leave a residue. So if you're doing some home decor projects, you can put it right on the wall, do your stencil in your design, and then remove the vinyl stencil from the wall without leaving any marks. It's great to use on glass, on wood, um, and your walls and canvases, as this sample right here shows, um, stencil vinyl was used to create this design. Now, to create your design today, we're going to do it in three easy steps. The first step is to use Cricut Design Space and make your design. We're going to be using one of the free images today to make our design, and you can use whatever. You can really kind of customize it, but I do have some an image that I'll be demonstrating, and if you'd like to use that image, we have made that one free for you today. Now, then, so step one, we're going to design our project in Cricut Design Space. Step two will be to use your Cricut cutting machine and cut out your design using the smart stencil vinyl or other um, permanent vinyl or um, reposit removable vinyl. And then we're going to create our project using the Armor Etch stencil cream. So this is the image I'm going to be working with today. It's since our project is Father's Day themed, which is right around the corner, I'll be using the number one father design and I'm going to be using it on a big jar. Um, I, my husband collects golf balls. So I, I'm making a big jar for him to put his golf balls in. And I thought this was a fun image to use. So number one father. Now you can use this image, we'll, I'll show you how to resize it. So if you're putting it on um, a beer glass or a, you know, a cocktail glass or the, the um, beer cup that I showed or just a, any other tumbler, I'll show you how you can resize the image to work with your design. Okay, so the Cricut stencil will work in every Cricut machine. There is smart vinyl that is sized for the Cricut Joy and smart vinyl sized for um, the Maker 3 and the Explore 3, as well as the stencil film that's designed for other your older machines and using it with a mat if you want to. The smart vinyl does allow you to cut up to 12 feet. So if you're working on a bigger project and you wanna use paint, um, for some home decor, you have the 12 foot roll of the smart vinyl to work with. Now, when you're cutting with your stencil material, you can use a weeding tool and we're going to weed out the actual design, leaving the negative space on the, um, on the vinyl. You remove the excess vinyl so that what you want to etch stays um, clear. There's no vinyl there. Now, when you're working with images that have small details, you might want to use the Cricut transfer tape. And you can just use standard grip transfer tape to apply over the vinyl, and it makes it easier to remove the vinyl and place it on your design. The image I showed, that number one father image, we won't actually need to use um, transfer tape because it's all one design. So we'll be able to remove that from the backing and put that design down. If you choose a design that has um, like letters with or numbers with um, no, like little pieces of vinyl on the inside, like something with an O and you want to keep the center of the O, that's when you would use that transfer tape. 
So I prepare my glass by using isopropyl alcohol, and this helps to remove any fingerprints, any dust, or any grease. You can also use a you know, Windex or other cleaning material. I would avoid using cleaning materials that say that it prevents fingerprints because that will put a coating on your glass or your mirror or you know your um, your blank it kind of puts a coating on it so those fingerprints don't stick but we want that we don't want to have a coating on there so that the etch cream will stick will apply to the glass now once you've cleaned your glass you want to let it dry completely so i usually will clean my glass before i start cutting set my glass aside, and then cut out my design. We're going to apply the design to the glass. If you need to use transfer tape, we can use transfer tape. And then if you need to, you can add a border using painter's tape or masking tape, and this will prevent any spillover of your design. When you're working with the Armor etch, Etching Cream, you want to work in an environment that is room temperature, so 70 degrees. And you would like to have everything at that same temperature. So your jar of etching cream, your blank, your vinyl, and the room itself. You do want to work in a well-lit area as well as a well-ventilated area. So I have a window open and it keeps, um, keeps my area well-ventilated. You can wear protective gloves and protective eyewear. The etching, etching cream is a uh, chemical and it burns into the glass. So the gloves is a good recommendation. Um, and you apply a thick layer of the etching cream so that the chemical can react properly on the glass. So you want it to be thick enough so that you can um, you can't see the design of the stencil through the Armor Edge cream. So what I do is I apply it and then I look out, I'll flip it over and look through the other side and make sure it's really, really on there very thick. Now, once you have your thick layer on your, on your blank, you can set it aside for about one to three minutes um, and let it, um, and let it, do its magic, if you will, let that chemical reaction happen. So you want to leave it on for one. Now the instructions on the Armor um, Etch website say one minute. On the packaging, it says one to three minutes. I let mine sit three minutes. <clears throat> it is recommended that you don't let it sit any longer than three minutes so that the um, the the etch, the etching cream can actually burn the glass and make the glass fragile. So anything longer than three minutes, the manufacturer recommends is too long. So three minutes is your tops. And I use my phone with my timer so that I don't, I make sure I'm not, you know, relying on my watch or I think it's been three minutes. Um, <clears throat> once you've cleaned, once you've uh, removed any excess etching, you can Take off the excess etching cream and put it back in the jar so you can reuse it. Um, it really lasts, those jars last a long time. Then you want to wash the etching cream off, any excess etching cream off of the glass using a lukewarm water. And um, so you wanna make sure you get all traces of the etching cream off, and then you remove the tape and any stencil pieces that remain. Um, and then you just clean your glass again and let it dry completely. Then you're ready to gift and enjoy your, your project. So some other ways that you can use smart vinyl, the smart um, stencil vinyl, and I'll just do a little walkthrough, are um, on glasses and a coordinating carafe. And I just love how when you don't have a liquid in there, it's like a white color. And then when you do have a liquid in there, you get like a monochromatic effect. And I, I really think that that is such a delicate um, detail. I love that. You can use the smart stencil vinyl on your doormats, and you can also use a uh, permanent vinyl on your doormats. I love this design here, adding the scallop edge on a planter, and that was just painted on. The table, which you saw early, was also used a roller paint and that was painted on. This great accent piece around a door was uh, painted on. 
And then you can use your stencils to make signs as well as more stencil designs for cups or mugs. Now I wanna point out, so this on the laundry company self-service, this is one type of design I would absolutely want to use a transfer tape on. So all those little pieces inside the letters didn't disappear or blend in. Now, if you don't wanna use um, the etching cream, but you want that frosted look, Cricut does have a permanent frosted vinyl that you can cut with your Cricut machine and apply to different um, blanks and get that look. So if you're using um, a, like a ceramic mug that doesn't accept the etching cream, but you really want that etched look, you can use the permanent frosted vinyl to get that look. And it kind of, it's, it has like a, it's like white, but it's opaque, I guess is what I call it. So it gives you that opaque look um, on glass and it really gives it a neat, a neat finish there. So that's your uh, other option to the glass um, etching cream if you want that etched look. And we do have more upcoming classes with Michael. So if you go to michaels.com in their class section, we have a class on June 13th um, about uploading designs from your desktop or laptop. And then we also have at the end of the month, five ways to fresh up your backyard to get that red, white, and bang. I'm really excited about those classes. And if you'd like to share um, what you create, this is my contact information on Facebook and Instagram, please share your projects using the hashtag make with Michaels or cricket with Michaels um, on Instagram. We'd love to see what you make. All right, so let me go ahead and stop sharing that. There we go. Now if we're ready to dive into design place. I, I will show you, I said I was working on a big, a big jug. So this is the jug that I have as my blank. And I opted, I was working on this one, um, this glass, and I love how, how the look comes out on this glass, but it was a little bit smaller um, for the design I was working on. I wanted to go big so you guys could see it on the camera. So I, I pulled up our big pickle jar and um, we're gonna turn it into a golf jar, golf ball jar. So I have my big jar. I have um, my alcohol and and the um, I have the, uh, my alcohol and some cotton balls to clean off my jar. I have my blue painters tape or masking tape. Um, we have the armor etch cream, and there is another etch cream at Michael's from Folk Art, which I did not have a chance to play with. But I just wanted to point out that if you can't find the armor etch. Michaels also has the um, glass etching cream from Folk Art. And then depending on which machine you're working with, you'll have your smart um, Cricut stencil vinyl and a paintbrush to apply your um, cream with. So that's everything. So Judy, good question. If you reapply the cream, will it come out darker? It won't necessarily come out darker, but if you reapply it over the same place, it that there is a chemical in the in the etching cream that really that kind of breaks down the glass. So putting putting it on too much or to you know putting on you can put it on thick for three minutes, but anything longer than that, you do run the risk of making that glass in that location even more fragile. Can you use paint or dye to the etched area to accent it more? You know, I I don't. I just let use it on the glass. Um, it maybe it's not showing up on the camera as well. Um, I'll try and show it better on the overhead. It really you can really see it, and you don't really necessarily need to add anything more to it. And when you add a liquid to it, it does um, show up a little bit more too. But just having it with a little subtle touch is kind of nice. You can find um, you can find glass paint, paint specifically for glass and create a stencil and paint with that. So if you wanted to use red, you could create your stencil using the stencil vinyl and then paint it red with a, with a paint specifically for glass that um, I'm, I don't, I'm not that familiar with that. I would definitely read the packaging if you can, Put it through the dishwasher or anything like that. Like this glass now, I can put this through the dishwasher 
and, and that dad is not coming off. So let me go ahead and um, I'm gonna share my screen again with design space, here we go. So let me go ahead and start um, with a new canvas. So what you're gonna do is just, when you come into design space, let's go to the home page like that. Um, and then the, um, we're gonna go new project. And we'll start on a new project here. So on my canvas, now my, again, my, my blank is humongous. So when I measured it, um, about three and a half inches across was as big as I wanted my, my image to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and locate my image we'll work with today, that number one father image. To do that, I go to the design panel, I click on the images icon, and you can see all these amazing images. Let me start, let me back myself up here because I had my last search on there. So in the, um, in the all images, and you can do it here where it says all images, or you can do it right here in this space and just type in Father's Day. Now, the Father's Day here, and then I'm going to narrow my choices down because there's really a lot of different designs. So I was looking for one that had the stencil look and we made it free. Now you have a lot of choices here um, if you want to pick a different Father's Day design or if you want to do a different design, please do feel free to do so. But I'm going to use that number one father with the big uh, diamond in there. I thought two for baseball, families with baseball dads, um, that that would be a really a great look. So the largest I want my image wide to be is three inches. So once I have that image on my canvas, I'm just going to change my width. So I'll change the width to three inches in the edit bar at the top. And there we go. So now my width changes with my height. I keep my proportion locked so I don't get, I don't stretch my design. I want to keep it with the proportions locked. Now, when you apply the stencil to your, um, to your blank, you can use painter's tape to create an um, edge around the stencil. And what that does is it prevents any, uh, any of the cream from going over to the edge, off the edge of your stencil. What I like to do though, is make it a little easier for myself and create a box around my stencil image. So once you have your image on your, um, when you have the image on your, canvas, what we're going to do is um, add a square design so that we can, um, or in this instance, I might need a rectangle so that I can create a border using the stencil vinyl and cut it out all as one. So I just go to shapes and I'm going to add um, a square onto my canvas. And from there, I'm just going to drop my square down below so it's be it'll fall behind my image here and from this point i need to make my square a little bit bigger so i'm going to change my width to five inches which gives me about an inch on either side of my design which is about the size of my masking tape so i'm going to keep my square at five inches or my rectangle at five inches Okay, so let me show you how I did that again. Once you have your image on your canvas, we're just gonna add another shape to the canvas so that you can create a shape around your image and it makes it easier um, on your stencils. Now, if you're using like a wine glass or something that has angle, like a if it kind of narrows down at certain points of it, you may not wanna add extra vinyl to the edge so that you get your vinyl to lay down very flat and then use your painter's tape around the edge of it. My jar is a very flat surface, so I can add that little bit of extra 
dimension around the edge of the design. So I'm going to go to shapes and I'll grab the square and I'll bring that on. And my image was three inches by three and a quarter and I need about a half and I'd like to have about an inch around. So I'm going to change this to be five inches. Didn't mean to change that design. I wanted to change my square to five inches. Now I can bring my um, design right into the center of that square. And if I wanna make sure that it's right smack dab in the center, I click off of all the images and using my mouse, I click on my canvas and drag my mouse around those shapes. And then I say align to center. And that puts that right in the center of my design. Now, once those two um, shapes are aligned with each other, I want to make sure that when I send this to my cutter, the image cuts right in the center of that square. And to do that, I need to attach those images together. But let me show you what it would look like if I send it to my machine without attaching those shapes together. What would happen is it would separate them, each individual shape, because they're different colors onto different canvases. But for my purposes, I want that number one father to be in the middle of my square here. So I'm going to select both of those layers again, and I will attach those layers together. Now, this time when I send it to my cutter, it will cut the number one father right out of the middle of my material. And now I'm ready to send it over to my machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit continue and it will send it over to my ma maker. Now, this is where you need to select your materials. Uh, if you're on a Explore 2, you have that dial, you can switch it to custom material. Then when you come into your prepare screen, you want to browse all materials. What I'm doing is I'm going to be using the smart vinyl. So I will go ahead and type um, smart stencil or just you can just type in stencil even and it will pull up all the different types of stencil material. So you have a flexible stencil film, a sandblast stencil, smart stencil, the stencil film that's a little thicker and then stencil vinyl. So I'll be using the smart stencil and I will attach that and done. Now it's saying to use my fine point blade and my machine is ready. So let's go ahead and switch my camera view to the overhead camera and stop sharing here. Nicole's asking a great question. Could, could you have um, sliced the image from the square image? And yes, absolutely, you could have sliced it together. Oftentimes slice and um, attach kind of give you the same results. The reason I like to use attach over slice is it's fewer steps once I've sliced it. So once I've sliced um, my image into that square, all I have to do is go to my cutter. If I had sliced the image from my square and, uh, and I, you know, I would have de probably deleted the layers I didn't need and then I'd have to select a different layer. So if I don't have to slice, I do find attach a little bit easier. And um, if we have beginners in the class, it's easier to learn attach than slice, but you can certainly um, use slice or attach. You kind of get this, a similar result. Can I chime in real quick, Kelsey? Absolutely. This is Anita. She's um, hi guys. <laughs> you may have heard her voice if you call customer service. Yes, definitely. So with attach, the biggest thing with attach is it creates a new image in the design space. And if you save that, you can never unattach it or slice it. If you slice, it's permanent once it is saved. If you attach, you can always go in and adjust anything that you have done. Yep. And you, yeah, because you're not creating extra, um, you're not creating extra layers like you do with right. slice. The yep. slice actually creates a whole new image in the design space. 
instead of using the existing ones. Yeah. Good point. Okay, so I'm using, thanks, Anita. I'm using this um, big, this big jar of isopropyl um, alcohol, and I've, I just a cotton swab. So I'm just cleaning off my area on my glass that I'm using. Now, if you're using, um, like, if you're going to do this type of, on, on a cup or tumbler like that, I do use my uh, that extra bit I put on my stencil as my guide to line up, but you could also, um, if you put your, I don't know if you'll be able to see it from here, but if you put your glass down and you know about where you want your image to go, you can take a, uh, like a Crayola marker. I don't know if this is a permanent pen. I don't want to, I'm not going to do it because I don't know if this is permanent, but you can take like a, a um, pen for um, dry erase markers and you put it on your glass and then you rotate your glass like this and it draws the line for how tall your image was. So if I was using, if I wanted my image to be this far from the bottom, I would put my little container down here. And I often use this container because it's a great height. And then I just put my pen on there and I take my glass and I rotate my glass um, against the pen and that would give me a straight line to follow. So that's just a little tip there if you're, if you're wondering how to get it to line up. Again, my big pickle jar here has a really good flat surface. So I will be able to, um, I'll be able to line this up pretty easily on this one. So now that, that my jar is clean, I'm gonna set that aside. And I have my, my smart stencil vinyl, and I'm just gonna load this right into my machine. So I'm not, um, I'm not using a mat with this, but you could certainly apply the smart uh, stencil vinyl with um, onto a mat and cut it that way. So you don't have to do it. If you wanna cut a little smaller pieces on it, you can do that. Now, I also am going to use the roll attachment onto my machine, which makes it a little bit easier to keep my roll from going crazy. And if I had that 12 foot roll of stencil vinyl and I were doing a long design, it certainly would be helpful to have your roll holder there. Not something you have to have. You can just like, a lot of times I just let my roll sit here and it, and it uncurls and curls back up. So I just thought it'd be fun to use this today. So if you're putting it on the mat, great question, Julie. You're gonna actually cut right into the vinyl and not the carrier sheet. So you want the blue material facing up, not your white background. You're gonna cut into the vinyl. So if you're, good question, Regina, if your glass isn't the same size on the top and bottom, you do sort of need to modify your design so that you can get the angle. So what I do is I kind of go to the mid part and measure how wide that is. And then um, I go from there to get my measurement. I'm trying to see if I have a, a cup around anywhere that I can grab. Um, let me reach up over here. So this isn't terribly, uh, doesn't have a terrible, but if you're doing like a wine glass that comes in, uh, this part is narrower than this part up here. So you, I kind of find my middle measurement and will make my design in that way. And then I do tend to, I'll cut little slits in my vinyl and give myself room to adjust the vinyl if I need to. So I hope Regina that answers the question. It's a good question. Okay, so my design has, has cut out and I just use that little blade and run across the oh dear. That did not go. Something happened there. I cut my design. <laughs> do that one more time. I'm going to cut that one more time. Sorry, guys. I, didn't, I wasn't paying too close attention there when I did that. 
just place a fresh start here. Good thing I always find when I teach classes is if I make a mistake, it's really not such a bad thing because uh, people get to learn from my mistakes sometimes. I don't know if that's good or bad, but it is what it is. All right, so let me just do this. Let me cut this again. Here we go. Gotta get my material. So Regina's asking, what is that tool I'm using to hold my roll? It is actually um, a paper roll holder. <laughs> and it comes, it was designed with the Maker 3 and the Explore 3 to hold the rolls of vinyl because you're using, sometimes you're using really long rolls, but it's the roll holder for smart materials. So it comes in a box like this and I, Michael's has it um, and it attaches, there's little notches. So it just attaches right onto your, um, onto your machine and it guides your vinyl in perfectly. You, I, I don't always use it. Um, I just thought it'd be kind of fun to have it out today. And, and use that one for today. I was gonna show how cool it is when it slices across. <laughs> I slice my design. All right. So don't feel free, like as you're, as you're cutting, feel free to ask questions. Um, as we're working so we can answer those questions for you and again that is that's the benefit of having the live workshop is that we get to interact with you with your questions and you get a, an answer right away but sometimes it'll be after the class and you're like oh i wish i had asked this so that's where it's good to um if you share your design to tag make with us or make with us at michael's no not what is it it's Cricket with Michaels um, in Instagram, so we can we can see what you make and answer any questions you might have. Now I do um, I use a paintbrush with the um, Armor Etch, and I like to use kind of an older, sturdier paintbrush. You can also use um, like a little stippling stenciling brush here if you wanted to. That would work. I want to make sure I don't cut that wrong again. Here we go. A little space there. And I'm just going to use my little slicer there and slice that right across. And what you'll see here is I have my design. I'm going to save my extra vinyl here because I don't need all of it. So I can just use my scissors here and these lines on the back of my, the backing of the vinyl. So you can just take that off. And what we're gonna do now is use the weeding tool and weed out any of the design that we are, the design we actually want to etch onto your glass. So normally we would weed out all this space around the design, but for this, we're going to weed out the actual extra parts of the design that is the design and leave the negative part of our design here. So I'll start and take off the edge here and then the edge at the bottom here. Now this weeding tool does have a little sharp point to the base of it. So it's great for getting in those little spaces and picking up pieces of the design and just popping those right out. Your weeding is a lot of people say they really enjoy weeding. It's very cathartic. Um, I just like to see the design revealed. So that's kind of fun for me. Now you can see it really does look like just a very light blue vinyl. And I think you'll enjoy how it transitions onto the glass when you see how the lighter vinyl shows up. Okay. So I've got my design all together. Now, again, everything that this particular design that I've selected 
it does have um, all the parts of it are together. So I could just pick this up and put it on my glass jar as is and just do it with my hands and not use transfer tape. I'm going to use transfer tape though because some of you may be using, some of you may need to use transfer tape and it might be helpful to see how we, how we use the transfer tape on these big rolls. I have a, I need to start a, a new roll of transfer tape. I can't believe it. Let me go over here. I use so much transfer tape. I have these big rolls that are just awesome. You do a lot um, with, your, with your vinyl. These big rolls are great to have. I just open this one up. Okay. So I just need a piece that is, I think my design was five inches. So I'll just cut a piece of six inch transfer tape. And again, the transfer tape does have the grid on it. So you can use that grid to line up your design on your glass as well. So sometimes even though you don't need to use the transfer tape, you may decide you want to um, because you just want to make it easier on you. I'll give myself six inches this way as well. All right, now from here, I'm just gonna fold back about a half an inch on the top of my transfer tape and allow that to go over my vinyl design. So I just will kind of pull this back a smidge. And reveal the edge. Sometimes I'll use my um, weeding tool. If I have a hard time getting it to pull back, I'll use my weeding tool and start my, my transfer tape in a corner that I don't need. So I'm just gonna pull this back about a half an inch along that first line, line there. And that makes it a little bit easier to put on my actual vinyl and remove the vinyl from my design. So I'm just gonna put that on. And then I, you flip that over, kind of make a hinge and you take that folded piece on the back side, and we're just gonna use my wedge and slide that down. And you can keep your transfer tape lined up with your vinyl piece and get that to go nice and smoothly like that. And then you really wanna make sure you've got a good stick on there, especially if you're doing a lot of little pieces, you wanna make sure you have a good stick on that. And then we're just gonna flip this over and begin to peel it off. Now your smart backing, you may notice is a little bit thicker. So sometimes it's a little bit harder to get it to come off. And what I do is I will fold it. I'll fold right along where the design is. And that I find makes it easier to pull the design off. So if you have any little pieces that don't wanna come off, if you just fold right above where that spot is, just fold it across like that and then start to peel it off. It, you'll find it comes off. And you also can change the angle with which you pull it off. Now this we can throw away and the backing for our transfer sheet, you may wanna keep that because you can reuse your transfer tape sheet numerous times. So here is my jug and now when I'm applying any type of vinyl, not just the, um, not just this stencil vinyl, any type of vinyl. And if I'm working with a little bit bigger piece, I like to hold my vinyl like a taco shell. So I just pull up the, the sides here and you can find the middle. So I find the middle of my design is right there. And I can use the guides on my transfer sheet and line that up onto my jar. So I'll put the middle of my design on. Let me make sure that's really the middle. Maybe that's not. I'm good. So I'm going to put the middle of my design on and line that up right with the middle of my design like that. And then, then I work from side to side, putting that design down. Now, as I mentioned, if you're working with a tumbler, 
or something that has these angles, you could come in and take your scissors and cut right here, holding one piece up, you can put one, let, like you, you, let me just do it. I don't know if it'll show you good enough here, but like I would hold that up and then put that down. And if I needed to bring this down and overlap that way. And then you wanna make sure there's, you work out any air bubbles. So you see, I have a lot of space around my design which is by in, intent. If you, I didn't use that much space, I would then use the, um, the blue packing tape. Once I got my design, my stencil down, I'd use that blue packing tape and I would begin to tape around the edge of my stencil because what you definitely do not wanna do is have that armor etch get onto portions of your design that you don't want to be etched. And remember the etching is a nice, light, subtle look. If you want something that's a little bit darker, I would definitely look into those um, glass paints and use those. Now I can just take my transfer tape and set that back on my sheet here so I have that for next time. And I can set that aside. I'm gonna use my wedge and just kind of go, go over everything and make sure like around my design, I have a good hold and there's no air bubbles around the edges of my design or anything like that. Air bubbles down here, I'm not really gonna worry about too much because um, my, there's not, I don't have to, nothing's gonna stay, nothing's gonna go under that. But along these edges, you wanna make sure you have a good, you have it nice and down. Okay, so once your design is down, then we're going to grab our paintbrush. And again, I'm just using kind of an old paintbrush here and your armor etch. Now the armor etch, I want to make sure that it is um, shaken. So you should give a good shake. And then we're going to apply that to, this, to the stencil. So when I apply it, you're just gonna put like that really thick coating on. And you can always go back and thin it out, but just go ahead and glob it on there and put a nice thick coating on there. So we're just gonna add that all around. Isn't that great? And I don't start my timer until I've, until it's all, I've put the cream on everything. Uh, then I'll start my three minutes. Okay, so once I got on there, you can smell it. So you definitely do wanna have that ventilated area. Okay, there we go. Now, as I'm gonna turn it around my jar, I just wanna look in the back and make sure that there really is, let me hold it up a little bit, that there's no stencil cream that's not covered. So I can see like on what's the top here, the top angle looks like, uh, it looks a little iffy. So let me start my timer. I'm gonna use my watch, start my timer. And then I'm gonna just make sure that I've got that on there in the right spots. And the cool thing is if where your stencil vinyl is and there's not a cutout, it will kind of beat up a little bit, which is kind of cool. So like right there, because it's not cut touching the glass, the stencil vinyl isn't right in that spot. And once I get it on, I don't really futz with it once I have it all on and all around. That looks pretty good. Okay, so we've got two minutes, two minutes of questions, guys. So fire away if you have any questions that we haven't answered in this. Fire away. Now, remember that the um, this is a little bit, I find this, the stencil vinyl to be a little bit, have a little bit more stick and hold to it. And I think that that's what really helps um, give those clean lines. Um, I was really like on this cup here, the lines are so clean 
and you just, it, they're just so clean. So I think that that heavier stick vinyl really does give you that advantage over just using a permanent vinyl. Um, so I, I do, I do like to use this when I'm using some sort of stenciling, even if it's just painting, I'll do that. Now, normally when I rinse this off, I would do this at the sink, but because we have the camera and my sink is across the room, I'm actually, I have a dish here with some water that I'll use to rinse this off and then I'll remove the stencil and then I would just wash it again and make sure it's all clean. Because you don't want that, you don't want the etching cream to stay on there longer than those three minutes. Okay, so our time check, we've got one minute left. And I even could have made this a little bit bigger, but I kind of like it. So can you reuse the stencil? Yes, the stencil material is intended to be reused. Um, I don't know if I'm, I'm rough, but I do tend to tear the stencil material, um, especially if it's got small details in it. It's a little bit harder um, they, to, to get it to come off in one piece still, but the intent is that you can reuse it. Um, again, it would be a little tricky if you had inside pieces to, to, re, to move it around um, with those inside pieces. What happens if the cream stays on longer than three minutes? Good question. Okay, so my time's up. Um, again, the Armor Etch website does say to leave it on for one to three minutes and then to wash it off. Now, I would say this is a really super thick, oh no, I got the etching, did I get up there? I may have got it. Okay, um, this is a really thick jar, the, the glass on this. So it may not cause a problem if I left it on there longer, but on something like this one here, this, this glass is much thinner. Um, and so what the, the etch and cream like burns into the glass and that's how you get that etch result. So it burns that design into the glass. Um, if you leave it on longer, it's just gonna burn, burn through your glass. So it just makes the, those weak points in the glass if you leave it on too long. So that's why those one to three minutes, because you don't want somebody holding a wine glass that you've just done some glass etching of, you know, Mr. and Mrs. and then have that glass just break apart in their hand. So you can see as I'm removing um, as I'm removing this etching cream, I can see that it's already um, worked and it's visible to me that the etching is, it has worked. Okay, so I'm just gonna put my top back on my etching cream and set that aside. And I'm gonna get my faux sink here, which is just a plastic container. Now I do rinse off the etching cream before I remove my stencil. And part of that is, I guess if I made a mistake, I could go back and um, re-put in a little etching cream if I wanted to, um, if in a spot that I missed. I did also, and I have not tried this, but I did also see a really cool idea of um, using etching cream and nail polish. Like if you wanted to etch one design into another design, you could do that using um, like nail polish to cover up a portion of it. And I guess that the, the etching cream doesn't go over it. And then um, you would use nail polish remover and remove the nail polish on your design. Okay. So now that I've got that, I've rinsed it off. And again, normally I would do this in a sink. I would not do this just in a tub here. Um, and I probably would do it with a glass jar if I were to do it again <laughs> and think about that. Um, so we'll just set that aside there and then we'll just bring this over here. And we'll, now we're just gonna remove the vinyl piece, your vinyl material. And let's see if we can do this carefully without losing any piece of it, if I can keep it together. 
So as I bring it up, I notice this here. So I'm just gonna pick that piece up, make sure that all stays together. Yep, it's working. Yep, so here we go. Now I'll tell you the great thing about using water when you do your vinyl. If I were to then turn this over and want to do another design with this, I could just put it right on here. And now I could etch all four. I would measure it though. I don't know if I've got it right. But now I could do glass etching using the same stencil on all four sides. And I may even want to put it on um, the transfer tape so that I have it lined up properly. But having it be a little damp, it does give you a little bit room to kind of move it around. But there it's back down. And I would, I'd need to let that dry a bit, but it's back down and I could just reuse that stencil right on that spot and I could just reuse the stencil. So that's, that's the beauty of that stencil vinyl is you can remove it. Um, now, again, if, if like this A weren't, I didn't have a stencil type of font on this and that A, that center A was there, I'd have to remove that and and put that on here as well. But let's go back to the side that we did do the, um, the design on. And it's kind of hard to see with this lighting. Can you see that? There we go. Dry it off here. Here we go. See how cool that looks? I have a piece of um, construction paper or cardstock I can put inside so maybe it'll show it up better. I love to, again, like I mentioned, when you put a liquid in it and it changes that color a little bit, this will show us better. Is that better? Oh, there you go. Does that show you a little better? Once it dries off too, it'll start, it'll show up a little bit better. There's so much reflection there. You see that? Let me try, um, let me do one other. Oh, there we go. I can see it on at that angle. Can you guys see that? Isn't that cool? So you can, and then as you saw, I just, I used hardly any of the armor etch and I did that design and now I've got my stencil. I could go ahead and turn it and rotate it and do it again on this side and just keep working my way around. But that's it. Those are all the steps that you need to create your own um to create your own stencil designs and you can do a whole set of glasses if you wanted to i was even looking at um my husband likes to have a glass of whiskey at night and i was looking at the bottled jars the other day i thought oh i thought i could pull off the label and put something onto there but thank you guys i hope those were some inspiring ideas again don't forget to tag us in um your projects that you make. Um, and we'd love to see what you're doing. Cricket with Michaels, hashtag Cricket with Michaels. Again, my name is Kesley and you can find me on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks so much, guys. Have a great afternoon. Happy crafting.